This is awesome. Trump paid uh, to, to prove voter fraud uh, by paying a research group to uh, study the election results in different states. And he kept the results hidden because they found none. President Trump's 2020 presidential campaign reportedly paid a research firm to find evidence of voter fraud, but kept the findings secret when no proof was found. The Washington Post reports the campaign never released the final results after the research team disputed many of Trump's theories and could not find any evidence that he actually won the election. That is according to four people familiar with the matter. The Post writes the campaign paid researchers from the Berkeley Research Group, the people said, to study 2020 election results in six states looking for fraud and irregularities to highlight in public and in the courts. Among the areas examined were voter machine malfunctions, instances of dead people voting, and any evidence that could help Trump show he won, the people said. The research was done in the final weeks of 2020 before Trump supporters stormed the Capitol on January 6th. Former President Trump continues to push the big lie today, despite the commissioned research saying otherwise. In a statement, a Berkeley research group Spokesperson said, quote, our experts provide independent and objective factual analysis. And as a matter of firm policy, we do not comment on client engagements or on privileged and confidential matters. NBC News also reached out to the Trump campaign for comment. A spokesman responded with a statement attacking Joe Biden and again suggesting Trump won the election. Since the election that he lost, multiple courts and swing states have confirmed Former President Trump did not win. Every single like court case that uh that was brought um about the election being a supposed fraud, uh they've always lost. And during various um subpoena deposition hearings about uh the uh about people who believe the uh the election was a fraud had said that they never believed it. People uh, like Tucker Carlson and various other people on Fox who are being sued by Dominion over the election lies, because that's still going on. Um, a lot of those people said they never believed it was a lie. Um, all they wanted to do was push that it was a lie because it got them ratings and it riled up the base. Um, and most of the people that told Trump that the election was a lie, he didn't believe it, but they knew that if they told him it was a lie, he would believe it, and they could potentially try to get the election overturned in some way. Let's bring in former U.S. Attorney Joyce Vance. She's an MSNBC legal analyst. And Joyce, what do you think is important about this news as it pertains to the big lie and legal efforts to prove that Donald Trump was trying to overturn the election and knew he lost? It's important evidence for the special counsel to have, Mika, because when you're talking, and, and we've talked for months now about the fact that prosecutors will have to prove that the former president knew he had lost, but nonetheless carried out the mm -hmm. conduct connected with January 6th and his effort to prevent certification of the vote. So the way prosecutors do that isn't just with one piece of evidence. What you really need is layer upon layer of circumstantial evidence. You don't have a confession from Trump that he knew. So you uh, achieve your proof as a prosecutor by showing through multiple people and multiple events that there's strong indication that he knew. At this point where you have an outside independent firm that's highly regarded confirming that there was no fraud involved in the election, if prosecutors can prove that that was communicated to Trump, it's really the nail in the coffin. I mean, well, if Trump paid for it or, well, I guess Trump, the Trump campaign, but it's, it seems highly unlikely that they would have told him uh, the research results, especially if he knew that they uh, were doing the research. Unless, I guess, they, they may have lied to him. But, yeah, this is uh, pretty much the, like, nail in the coffin. Trump knew that there was uh, no election fraud, but he kept with uh, um, 
convincing people that there was and he's still trying to convince people that there is and that's why he uh, told people to go fight on January 6th so that he could overturn the results and make himself a dictator and this is what uh, a lot of the, his right-wing base wanted as well they wanted him to become a dictator many of them wanted him to become a king because uh, there's a lot of people on the right that wants a monarchy even though they're supposed to be about freedom the right wing are nothing but fascist people and uh, we need to actually treat them as what they are and not as just some you know benign political group it, it, they're fascists looking to take over the government so that they can implement their uh, one solution or final solution so let's talk also on January 6th, uh, Joyce, some news that the special counsel, Jack Smith, issued a subpoena to former Vice President Mike Pence. The Pence's team is not committed one way or the other, uh, whether they're going to comply. There's a sense, though, they may not. So if that's the case, do they have any ability to not comply with the subpoena from special counsel? Uh, and just if you have nothing to nothing to fear, you got nothing to hide. So why wouldn't they um, go along with the subpoena? and tell their truth if uh, they're not trying to hide anything you know isn't that what right-wingers say when you know talking about justice if you got nothing to fear you got nothing to hide so they so you should let the cops and you know the justice system do whatever they need to do uh, speak to us as to what an escalation in some ways this is, that if the, this special counsel clearly is a sign, they're not just focused on Mar-a-Lago documents, they're focused on January 6th and the most innermost members of Trump's circle. You know, we have gotten so used to the former president getting away with running circles around the legal system that people might forget that compliance with the federal grand jury subpoena is not optional, right? Mike Pence will show up. He will testify. Trump's attorneys very likely will try to litigate executive privilege claims. They won't work because executive privilege is meant to protect communications a president has as part of his governance of the country. It's not meant to protect crimes. It's not meant to protect presidents who are trying to hold on to power after they've lost an election. And so, yeah, executive privilege doesn't work for former presidents. <coughs> Sorry, I had to go. Um, which is just this shows that Trump like has no idea like anything about government since he still thinks that he has like these presidential powers after being president when he doesn't I mean pretty much the only thing you get after being president is you got a secret service detail that follows you and your family around and other than that you basically don't get any presidential power I mean not, not like a secret service is a presidential power that's more of a of a benefit I mean you, you know you're privy to a bunch of information and uh, you know the government doesn't want other people to you know try to kill you or whatever and get that information Pence will testify and as you point out it really is an escalation in the special counsel's tactics it suggests that he is at the point where he needs to talk to the essential witness Mike Pence the only person other than Trump who knows exactly what happened on both sides of that phone call on the morning of January 6th. Coming up, we'll talk with the Oscar-nominated...